Mike Tyson's Punch-Out is a boxing game released in 1987 for the NES. It is based on an arcade game of the same name, minus the reference to Mike Tyson, where the player takes on the role of Little Mac. Little Mac must take on a number of opponents in what feels like a David and Goliath situation, where the player must use their quick reflexes to become the ultimate boxing champion. But Little Mac doesn't embark on this journey alone. He's accompanied by his trainer, Doc Lewis. One of my favourite moments of the game has to be, upon taking a beating, Doc suggests to Little Mac that he join the Nintendo Fun Club to help. While I thoroughly enjoyed playing Punch-Out, I found this game really tested my skills. I am a twitchy person at the best of times, and found it very difficult to avoid dodging when it wasn't needed. And unfortunately, this game is very unforgiving, and often I found myself being met with a punch in the face. Basics of the game are very simple. Your character is in a fixed position and can dodge using left and right on the D-pad. Holding down makes Little Mac block, and pressing down twice causes him to duck. The A and B buttons are used to punch with your left and right, respectively. By default, you will try to punch your opponents in the stomach, but if you hold up at the same time, you will go for a punch to the face. As well as this, it's possible to punch an enemy and receive a star, but this will only happen if you punch your opponents at a specific point. If you have a star, you can press the start button and go in for an uppercut, which does an increased amount of damage. On the face of it, the game is deceptively simple. Each match lasts three rounds, each of which are three minutes. You can try to survive all three rounds and hope that you will win a victory by points. Points are awarded by doing certain things in the fight. For example, a knockdown will award 1000 points. Or, you can also win by trying to get a TKO. This occurs when you knock down an opponent three times in one round. The game also has stamina, which is represented by hearts. Your stamina is reduced through a number of different ways, such as having an opponent block one of your punches. If your stamina is reduced to zero, you will not be able to attack. Stamina is then regained by dodging your opponent's hits. After defeating an opponent, you progress to the next fight until you reach the end of the circuit. The final fight of each circuit is the title bout. After you win the title bout, you complete the circuit and become the new title holder. In total, there are three circuits. The minor circuit, the major circuit, and the world circuit. Successfully beating all three of these will get you to the dream fight against Mike Tyson. There are a variety of ways to approach fights. Certain attacks will deal more damage to enemies, and in some fights, it is possible to reduce an enemy's health to zero by executing a certain move. As an example, if you successfully punch Piston Honda in the gut when he goes in for a special attack during the World Circuit fight, which is the second time that you encounter him, you can instantly knock him down for 10. This is where the game's complexity comes to the fore. Figuring out these kind of tactics is a case of trial and error but it gives the game a lot of replay value. The first two circuits are pretty simple affairs. Things start to really spice up when you get to the world circuit, however. One boss in particular in the world circuit gave me some real trouble, and that was Mr. Sandman. Mr. Sandman is the first fight in the game and the only fight outside of Tyson, which felt genuinely serious. Even before the match starts, you can see him practicing his special move, the Dreamland Express. That being said, once you figure out how to handle his attacks, 
he is child's play. The game feels very slapstick for the most part. Each of the characters are very eccentric, and some of their attacks feel completely ridiculous. But this facade fades away with the final fight of the game. Tyson is not funny. The gimmicks and quirks that appeared in the previous rounds are not there, but somehow this still manages to be the most lethal fight of the whole game. Tyson is fast, and his uppercuts in the first half of the first round knock you out in one hit. This is something I was entirely unaware of, and really struggled with, because the amount of time that you have to dodge these is incredibly short. Even if you make it past this section, the fight is still lethal. One wrong move, and Tyson can take a huge amount of health. It is possible to beat Tyson with points, but honestly, after coming so far, that didn't feel good enough for me. Beating Tyson took me a lot of attempts, and when I say a lot, I mean a lot. But in the end, it was all worth it. Overall, I found Punch-Out an incredibly challenging, but still fun and compelling game. And if you stick with it, it is worth that sweet, sweet victory. Thank you for listening to my thoughts on Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. If you would like to catch me live, you can find me over at twitch.tv forward slash Cheers.